Hello and welcome. This is Solar PV TV from Brussels, from the fifth uh, semi forum. Uh, today we'll try to find an answer to the question Quo vadis the solar PV European industry? <music> Traditionally, dozens of top managers from the semiconductor and solar PV industry, but also European key decision makers, met to discuss the issues and opportunities faced by the European industry. Uh, you know, I think today uh, clearly Europe is still the largest market. 80% uh, of the photovoltaic panels are installed uh, in Europe, 50% in Germany. So we have clearly an opportunity. The uh, issue is that in the top 10 today, there are only one European company. Most of the market uh, and companies are no more uh, in, uh, in Europe. And I think uh, clearly innovation has to take place uh, with also uh, the policies which should uh, uh, privilege uh, the move uh, from uh, north to south because uh, producing uh, electricity from uh, sun uh, is certainly making sense where the sun is available and the strongest in order to get grid parity sooner. So I don't think there is only one answer. There is strong opportunities uh, in countries where uh, there is uh, a strong policy to support uh, renewable energy with a feed-in tariff which allows uh, this industry to grow and eventually reach grid parity in these countries. But there is also a very strong incentive today to move uh, more south, uh, to bring uh, green electrons on the European grid, maybe also from uh, the northern part of Mediterranean, where uh, the Article 9 of uh, Europe uh, brings some incentive to import green electrons from sunny regions. And this is where I think uh, we have an opportunity to create a breakthrough in uh, technology. Uh, because when it happens to be in sunny regions, efficiency makes a difference in terms of cost and in terms of efficiency that means innovation, that means technology. So really that's where Europe could make a difference and uh, I'm a really also a believer to my company with the model we have developed winning uh, key markets uh, in uh, California, uh, in sunny regions, arid regions, that this new emerging market will be the booming one and that's where Europe also could be very strong. Uh, I know mainly the issue in, uh, in France because uh, what happened about the moratorium done by our uh, administration. But uh, I think that uh, this, uh, this happened because uh, a lot of money has been uh, given to the R&D, Research and Development, in France since uh, 10 years. And uh, we didn't see any improvement on uh, an industry uh, other than a module uh, manufacturer. So um, I don't like uh, what is happening to, to the industry in, in France, and, uh, but uh, I think that uh, we have to, to completely change uh, the mind and to, to be much more integrated on the photovoltaic, I mean from the silicon uh, till the module, in order to, to reduce uh, the price and the cost, to have a complete uh, integrated uh, supply chain. This is the only way to, to go out. So it takes time uh, to understand. Now we, we are in trouble, and uh, I hope that uh, they will understand much better in France. Um, with respect to European uh, manufacturing, Companies, uh, I would say that uh, the current opportunities are definitely outside of Europe. Yeah. So uh, as everybody can see from uh, the market development, there's a clear focus on Asia currently. That means uh, all the major European equipment companies uh, who are active in the PV field are definitely exporting uh, to Asia. This is namely China, Taiwan, Korea. Um, however, there are still some big opportunities uh, in Europe. Um, I would say Europe is larger than what we normally think about Europe. Um, we have some very interesting pro projects, for example, in the eastern part of Europe currently, uh, but also going to the Arabic uh, countries, there are big opportunities. Um, however, for European equipment manufacturer, it's a decisive factor to really keep the innovation pace and the innovation leap worldwide because Europe will never be able to really become the price leader but they will always only survive if they are the innovation or technology leader. The issues we currently face uh, first of all it's actually the war for talent that means uh, we have more and more problems to really um, gain a lot of brain potential 
um, into our companies. That means uh, we need highly educated people. We need their willingness to really go into an industry which is just emerging, I would still claim, because I think the, the big business is still to come. And uh, we need to convince more people to really um, go to universities, take, let's say, the hard way um, to, uh, to undergo degrees in, uh, in mechanical engineering, in physics, in chemistry. Yeah, so that means everybody does not long and only need to be or become an investment banker, but uh, people also need the, uh, the willingness to really go the hard way to undertake such uh, educations. On the other hand side, um, I would uh, make a strong claim we need to make more use out of the demoscopic development in South of Europe. We have more and more older people and I think it's now the time to really make efficiently use out of this knowledge which currently is not active so to say um, and we are already undergoing our own programs to really attract former employees, for example, in peak times when we don't have enough brain people inside of our company, it's a very good way to attract people from outside. Um, another thing I would like to mention is uh, a good way to really acquire uh, highly educated people is to focus on the partners of um, employees, that means if they're married, yeah, most of our engineers, they also are married to highly educated uh, wives, which currently stay at home. Yeah, and we are currently uh, thinking about programs, how to actively activate this brain potential um, for the benefit of our company. In the recently launched new Conto Energia, the Italian government encourages EU manufacturing by introducing 10% prime on feeding tariff. Is it a good direction to protect the European industry? So I think to create a market incentive and bring a renewable uh, uh, you know, faster to the market is really the best way to bring this technology at the right cost uh, sooner than later. Uh, but I think also we could uh, value some uh, other incentives like uh, attaching uh, you know, the, some uh, premium or incentive or certificate, green certificates to those technology which have the lowest uh, carbon uh, footprint, CO2 footprint. And I think through that it's a kind of virtual, uh, virtuous uh, uh, cycle we are creating. That means technology which are produced in the countries which have the strongest policy to bring renewable will get also the best uh, footprint and so that will create a kind of uh, a premium or uh, uh, upside to the model if uh, the certificates attached to green electrons could be valued more and uh, through uh, uh, a market which uh, uh, creates uh, this upside and financial upsides uh, in a more obvious and visible manner. I may say bravo Italiano <laughs> because uh, I think that the, the only way to, to rise up uh, the, the market of uh, photovoltaic. So I know uh, the same, uh, same example from Canada. Canada two years ago, the, they said that on the sales price of uh, on a module has to be 40% Canadian. Now this year is 80%, which means that uh, Canada helped a lot on that. And I know uh, about uh, this Italian uh, decision, which is very good, because um, this uh, will help a lot uh, to have a European product to be sold in Italy. So I encourage that uh, in every country, in Spain, in France, in Belgium, in, everywhere. I say that this is the way to go. Nowadays more than 50% of manufacturing capacities are based in China, although the equipment manufacturing is still coming from Europe. Will European companies be able to maintain its high-tech leadership? Uh, I'm quite sure that European companies will be able to, uh, to do this. Um, as you might know, I myself, uh, I'm uh, I was educated in the semiconductor equipment business and I saw all the development already many years or even two decades ago. Um, and we still have very strong European equipment manufacturers for semiconductor application. Um, and it's one of my, let's say, uh, clear, uh, I'm clearly convinced that only technology leadership yeah, will maintain equipment companies uh, in Europe. Um, and we as a company, Centrosum, we are doing a lot in order to make this true. 
Uh, we are investing heavily in innovation at a much higher rate than our competitors from outside Europe are currently doing. Um, we also are, have uh, now funded or taken the decision to build a complete new R&D facility outside of our main operational environment at the Lake of Constance, very attractive place, direct vicinity to university, Fraunhofer institutions, yeah, very attractive also for customers to come over and go into joint development programs. Um, and that's why we think and we do a lot in order to really maintain uh, our technology leadership position here in Europe. I think that uh, what has not been done by, uh, by the, the European about uh, supplying funds for uh, photovoltaic has been done by, uh, by ASEAN. And uh, so the technology transfer has been given by equipment manufacturer from, uh, from, uh, from Germany mainly. And uh, we, never, we never sold uh, ourselves, uh, we are an equipment manufacturer, we never sold to, to, to China. Uh, but now uh, what happened, uh, I have an American customer that uh, decided uh, not to, to invest in Michigan, but to invest in China. And when uh, I told, okay, you, you will buy my equipment, he said, no, I will do uh, that with uh, Chinese equipment. So which means that, um, so we are, uh, we are already <laughs> very, very down. So I think that uh, everything happened. What we, we don't want uh, that happened, but it happens now. It's too late. After exciting PV panel discussion, we asked Professor Eike Weber, director of Fraunhofer ISA, whether the European industry will survive the global competition, in his opinion. I think, honestly speaking, is that the European industry has a clear possibility to survive and to strive, but I don't think the decision about it is done already now. I think there's a clear danger that the key industries will not survive in Europe if Europe will not come to its terms and recognize that we need to get active about it. And most important piece of action is to create a globally level playing field to ensure that globally competitive manufacturing stays in Europe. And this has to start with things like investment support, investment guarantees for loans in order to make sure that we have similar conditions as people in the United States or in China who get this type of support from the government. I think it is essential and it might be extremely important for the future of Europe. Fortunately, there are organizations helping the European industry to stay competitive on the global markets. You know, Sammy, PV Group is, a, is an association worldwide and uh, our goal is to keep our members uh, growing and, and profitable and for that we do collective measures uh, that the individual company cannot do by themselves such as uh, industry advocacy, advocacy uh, with the governments, with the European Union in, in Europe but also conferences uh, that we organize and then most important uh, standardization uh, that is leading to cost reduction and also uh, roadmap, roadmap development and uh, here especially we work uh, with the so-called ITRPV, this International uh, Technology Roadmap for Photovoltaics uh, that is actually defined by the cell makers, they tell us how they see the roadmap and this roadmap, roadmap is then helping us to create standards and, and further activities. And that's all for today and we'll meet you very soon at the largest ever event in Munich, InterSolar Europe. <laughs>